in our module three we will discuss about analysis of beams and torsions of shafts moving on to our module four we will be discussing about analysis of heat transfer especially we will be dealing with problems on composite walls heat transfer through fins as we all know the three basic modes of heat transfer are conduction convection and radiation the conduction mode of heat transfer is governed by fourier's law of conduction which states that the rate of heat transfer is directly proportional to cross sectional area perpendicular to the direction of heat flow and the temperature gradient so for conduction mode of heat transfer we have fourier law of conduction which states that the rate of heat transfer is directly proportional to cross sectional area perpendicular to the direction of heat flow and temperature gradient that is dt by dx if i consider the plane one of length dx in which we are analyzing a rate of heat transfer q then this q is proportional to the area perpendicular to the direction of heat flow and the temperature gradient let us say heat is transferring from temperature t1 to t2 proportionality constant is defined as thermal conductivity times the cross sectional area perpendicular to the direction of heat flow and the temperature gradient if i want to have the flux heat flux the heat flux due to conduction is defined as the rate of heat transfer to the cross sectional area so if i do that the rate of heat flux due to conduction given by minus k dt by dx whose unit will be watt per meter square so this is the formula for heat flux due to conduction the second mode of heat transfer is convection for convection mode of heat transfer to happen this convection heat transfer generally takes place between two different surfaces one among these surfaces must be in motion let us consider a hot water flowing on a cold surface the heat transfer taking place between the hot water and the cold surface is due to the convection mode of heat transfer the convection mode of heat transfer is governed by newton's law of cooling the convection mode of heat transfer which is governed by newton's law of cooling states that let us consider a surface of temperature ts on which a fluid is flowing whose temperature is t infinity then according to newton's law of cooling the rate of heat transfer is proportional to the surface area and the temperature difference that is t infinity minus ts where t infinity is greater than ts now the proportionality constant is given by convective heat transfer coefficient which is indicated by the alphabet h times the surface area which is in contact between the fluid and the surface times the temperature difference now the heat flux we already know the formula for heat flux small q is equal to rate of heat transfer divided by the area so if i do that the heat flux due to convection is given by q due to convection is equal to convective heat transfer coefficient times the temperature difference and the unit will be watt per meter square the third mode of heat transfer which is nothing but the radiation the radiation mode of heat transfer is governed by stephens boltzmann's law of radiation in our heat transfer analysis through finite elements technique we will be analyzing only these two modes of heat transfer one is conduction mode of heat transfer another one is convection mode of heat transfer and we will be dealing the problems on composite walls and heat transfer through fins fins are nothing but the extended surfaces before moving on to analyze the heat transfer through composite wall and fins let us derive the expressions for stiffness matrix for conduction mode of heat transfer 
stiffness matrix for convection mode of heat transfer and load vector due to conduction and convection. Before going to derive this expression, one should know the governing differential equation for 1D heat transfer through conduction and convection. So if I want to derive that, let us consider now to derive this governing differential equation for one dimension heat transfer through conduction and convection, let us consider control volume. The length of this control volume be dx having a cross section area A, let small q be the heat flux due to conduction, which is multiplied with cross section area A will get the rate of heat transfer. Let the amount of heat moving out of this control volume be q plus dq by dx into dx multiplied with cross section area. Let us consider the convective mode of heat transfer from the lateral surface. The convective mode of heat transfer from the lateral surface will be due to the air moving around this control volume whose convective heat transfer is given by H and the area under consideration is the surface area. The surface area is calculated with the help of perimeter. Surface area is the product of perimeter and the length. Now, if I apply the heat balance for this control volume, before applying the heat balance for this control volume, let us discuss the various notations what we have used. That is, H is defined as the convective heat transfer coefficient and A is defined as the cross-sectional area of the elemental volume and Q be the heat flux due to conduction. Let the temperature of this control volume be Ts and the temperature of the environment be T infinity. And we are considering the case in which the temperature of the surface is greater than the temperature of the environment. Where in which due to the convection mode of heat transfer, the heat is transferring from the Q to the environment. So now QH is defined as the heat flux due to convection. AS is considered to be surface area which is calculated with the help of perimeter times the thickness or length that is dx where P is the perimeter and PS is the surface temperature of control volume and T infinity is the environmental temperature. With these knowledge, let us write the heat balance to this control volume. I get now applying the heat balance to the control volume. I have heat balance for this control volume. Heat in plus heat generated must be equal to the heat out. Let us consider Q which is nothing but the amount of heat generated per unit volume. From heat balance Et plus heat generated should be equal to heat moving out of the control volume. Now amount of heat coming into the control volume is because of conduction that is flux times the cross section area plus the amount of heat generated inside the control volume is Q watt per meter cube because Q is the amount of heat generated per unit volume so therefore the amount of heat generated will be amount of heat generated per unit volume times the volume so this gives us the amount of heat generated inside the control volume this must be equal to the heat out Heat is moving out of the control volume due to convection that is QH times the perimeter into length plus heat moving out due to conduction is Q plus dQ by dx into dx multiplied by area. So this is the heat balance for the control volume. Now, if I simplify by substituting the Fourier law of conduction and Newton's law of 
fully, I am going to get the governing differential equation for one dimension heat transfer to conduction and convection as I have heat coming in due to conduction. Let us take this value to left hand side. It will become minus QA minus dQ by dx into dx times the area plus heat generated is Q times area into length will be equal to the convection heat transfer times perimeter into length. So now further simplifying we have the value of flux due to conduction is given by minus k dt by dx whereas flux due to convection is given by h times t surface temperature minus t infinity. So substituting these two heat fluxes, heat flux due to conduction and heat flux due to convection in the above equation and simplifying which I am going to get minus d by dx of the value of q that is flux due to conduction is given by minus k dt by dx times dx into area plus amount of heat generated is q times area into length will be equal to heat transfer due to convection that is heat flux due to convection is given by h times the temperature difference that is surface temperature minus the ambient temperature and the area is very minute times the length or thickness which gives us the surface area. Now for this equation I throw divided by area times the length if I do that the equation will be reduces to minus of minus will become plus so therefore d by dx of k times dt by dx plus q is equal to h times perimeter divided by cross sectional area into T of surface temperature minus T infinity. So this is the governing differential equation for one dimension heat transfer through conduction and convection and transferring internal heat generation. We are conducting steady state analysis. When you say the analysis is steady state, the variable which is temperature for the heat transfer problems as we already know from our knowledge the field variable for structural problems is displacement the field variable for heat transfer problems is temperature therefore for steady state analysis variation of field variable that is temperature with respect to time will always be zero so we are conducting only steady state analysis of heat transfer in our pilot element analysis so that's all from our lecture number 1 of our module 4. In the next lecture, I am going to derive the equation for stiffness matrix and load vectors into conduction and convection. That's all from this lecture.